Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Caddy Cube Tuesdays. I'm Jason Barnard. I'm here with John Ainsworth. And you get the song. A quick hello and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, John Ainsworth. Contrarian revenue tactic. What does that mean? So most people, I think, spend, most people I talk with certainly spend most far too much time working on driving more traffic and not enough time on how do you actually convert most of that traffic into making money. And I see this from people who are running SEO, but I also see it from people who are working on ads. If people don't know how do you actually fix all the holes in your bucket and get more people, get more of those people to spend money with you. Right. Oh, there's a children's song about that. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Eliza, right. dear Eliza. So you've got to sing that song and fix the bucket. So from now on, every time I'm thinking about our funnel, I will sing that song in my head and we'll do a much better <laughs> job. Before we get into that, and I'm really interested, I think this is going to be a hugely interesting conversation, looking at your brand, sir. John Ainsworth, incredibly popular name. Yeah, great actor. Hey, aren't I? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? And this is... this. This is actually in Holland. This result comes up. I'm sitting in Holland, and you can see his description comes from Fandom, which is delightful. Fandom is a, a great source for descriptions in knowledge panels uh, for actors, entertainment people, not so good for somebody in the digital marketing industry or heavy industry. Uh, he's obviously done lots of films, so that's a really easy knowledge panel to get with those knowledge panel cards at the top, which are actually early stages SGE. And that was Google's first foray two years ago into SG. They've been having these around for two years. And you can see the similarities between them and how they're built. I find that hugely interesting. And then I looked at this uh, re result in New York, I think this is. Uh, the knowledge panel is smaller, so it shows you in different countries. You can have the big knowledge panel with the knowledge panel cards, or you can have the smaller one like this and a different description from IMDb. And then John Ains with Progress, and then John Ains with Data Driven Marketing. I'll bet my bottom dollar that's you. That's me. All right. I do come up on this somewhere. That's good. Yeah, famous. So it's made that association. You can see there your LinkedIn profile ranks really well. And what Google's trying to do there is give me, the user, a choice of which John Ainsworth I'm looking for. Obviously, the act comes first because they're the most famous. But after that, uh, Google's saying, well, how can we give the user the option of actually specifying which one I'm looking for? And today I was looking for you and I found you sitting in your studio. <laughs> brilliant can so I tell you a, yeah can i tell you a little story about um so about uh personal branding and trying to appear up the top of google yeah so brilliant. i've got a friend jody jody's fantastic she's amazing she's a contributor for forbes she has sold businesses before she's a power lifter international power lifter she's brilliant and she gave a talk at a conference i was at about why you should really work on your personal branding and mm. so uh, I went and I bought johnainsworth.co.uk. That guy, the actor, he's got .com, so I can't get that one. Right. Um, and I've made a plan of, yeah, at some point I'm going to work on it, but I didn't do it. And then she started an AI tool called CoachVox. And CoachVox allows you, if you're a coach, to upload all of your coaching information and make your own AI version of yourself. Oh, and brilliant. so I had a little look, and uh, if you want that, it's coachvox.ai. I had a little look. I thought, I wonder if she's bought jodycook.ai, and she hadn't, mm. so oh, I wow. bought it. Oh, so <laughs> I bought it, and then I put a quote from her up on there, and then I just left it to see right. what she noticed at some point. Would she at some point fi figure out that it was, you know? So she she went to buy it at some point, found it had been bought, was frustrated, went and looked at it and was like... She messaged me. She's like, I know it was you, Ainsworth. I know it was. <laughs> Brilliant. And now you've given it to her with no. great. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Excuse me. Well, I'll tell you a similar story. It's Dave Davis wrote to me and said, haven't you noticed anything on CaliCube Pro SERP? And I said, yeah, there's something really weird. There's a CaliCube with a C appearing. And it's yeah. redirecting to CaliCube.pro, our official site. And then right. there was this kind of silence on Messenger. And then it was, ha, 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 that's me playing a joke <laughs> on you. I thought Cali Cube was spelt with a C. Now you'll you'll learn that you have to cover the bases when people can't yeah, spell yeah, yeah, your yeah, name. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Davis teasing me. I thought it was brilliant. But he yeah, was, right. was incredibly generous and just gave me the domain back. And he was just trying to prove a point that I'm I told her she not as smart as I look. But in the meantime, I just keep playing jokes by changing the quotes that go up there. So, yeah. <laughs> brilliant. So our branded talk is now over, but it will yep. come back. 
And oh, and before we do that, isn't this tool quite similar where you can query somebody's knowledge? Yeah, exactly. So we built this tool using coachfox.ai. And right. so this is datadrivenmarketing.co slash yosip dash AI, which is quite long, or datadrivenmarketing.ai will take you to the same place. Right. And basically, we took all of the knowledge of our head of delivery, Yosip, and we uploaded it to this tool and, and personalized it built on top of ChatGPT. So if you want to know anything about course funnels, how to, how to improve your funnels, how to sell more of your product, especially courses, but also works for other stuff, uh, e-com or whatever, um, you can just go and use this totally for free. So that's datadrivenmarketing.ai. Right, brilliant. And I wanted to put that up because we built Calibot which is based on 2 million words that I said or written, all human mm -hmm. corrected, fed to Calibot, and it's incredibly powerful for anything to do with brand tips and knowledge panels and really rubbish, anything to do with how to sell your courses and funnels for courses. So depending on which subject you're looking at, choose your bot. Um, and I think we should build a free tool like that. It would be hugely interesting, and that's a handy hint to the team who are watching this, and hopefully we'll do it soon because it's a lot of fun, isn't it? That's great. When I when I actually want to know the answer to something, sometimes I go and ask it. I'm like, what yeah. would you use AI say? Before I message him in Slack, I'm like, what would you use AI say first? I was working Maybe on that's why I don't get so many messages from the team anymore. They're just yeah. asking <laughs> Kelly <Bot. laughs> Brilliant stuff. Uh, let's get on to revenue because, you know, obviously we're here to have a chat, but we're all, I'm also here to understand your revenue strategies. I mean, you're talking about filling holes in your bucket. Um, mm -hmm. which I love, and people focusing too much on the top and not on the bottom. And now what I would say is bottom of funnel, people are going to Google your name. That's where there is a great win that most people miss, is making that brand search, the search result for your brand name incredibly yeah. positive so that you don't cause any friction. And people say, oh, I don't need to because obviously people are looking for me, but why don't you make it a better experience? That's my point of view. What's your point yeah. of view? Yeah, so the thing that I find, so the people we work with, the people who've already got courses and they've already built an audience. So they might have, you know, 500,000 views a month on YouTube or something like, you know, they might have lots of traffic from Google, they might have a big Instagram channel. And so they've already done that part. And what they then do is carry on doing the thing they know how to do. They're like, how can I drive more traffic? How can I drive more traffic? How can I make more courses? And there's this massive gap where they aren't then converting people to actually buying enough of the courses getting enough people to buy them but i see this i see this wider i don't see it just with um, our particular audience i see it with friends in the entrepreneurial space as well who they want to scale with ads but then they don't spend the time on making the funnel better first they've got all these holes like i'm talking about in the funnel yeah so there's a few parts to it certainly in the course space the way that it actually works the way you actually make more money is you convert people rather than directly to sales you get people onto your email list with great lead magnets mm -hmm. that you promote everywhere across your site or across your social media and then you send great email promotions every month to them and mm -hmm. most people will do an email promotion every so often you know two or three times a year but you do a great one every month and therefore you get more sales and then you put in place things like order bumps and upsells that increase your revenue per sale so that you make a higher average order value and overall what we find with our clients is that generally five times is their revenue so the the, the increase is not insignificant this is like this is hefty this is an actual real big deal you know well and that's lovely because it's measurable um, mm -hmm. And businesses love measurable. And when the boss says, I want ROI, and you can say, well, here we go, we five times, and that's how much money we made, and this is how much we spent, everybody's yeah. happy. Whereas SEO, digital marketing, it's all kind of fluffy and in the air, and, and people get really frustrated. And what you just said is Katrina, who runs the course along with Marielle, should really sign up for this bot, whose name I have forgotten, Josip AI, sign up for that. And, and what, they're, what they're doing is exactly what you're saying, but I'm sure we can do it better and we can learn a lot, learn a lot from that bot. Um, so from, from that perspective, you're saying bring people onto the, the email list. Is that the principal yeah. way to drive revenue? Obviously for courses, you're saying, would you say it works equally well for anything, especially B2B, which is our spot? Generally, yes. It's not quite as simple as that so there's some that. places where you want to always you, you, where you've got a low ticket thing you might make a sale straight away and there's mm -hmm. some places with high ticket where it's sometimes better to go straight to a sale but as a general rule in most industries you're better off trying to get their their email address first so e-commerce the way that this works is you offer people a 
10% discount if they sign up to your email list. That's the way you get somebody on. And then you're just sending regular promotions of different, different products that you've got. In the course space, what you're doing is offering a lead magnet, something useful right. for free because you're selling information. So you want to give away a bit of free information. And then that links really nicely. In the B2B space, if you're doing um, like higher ticket B2B sales, you want to have some way of getting the person's details and being in touch with them and following up with them. But is it directly onto an email list? Probably, but it's, it slightly depends, you know. So what we do is we'll do a free funnel review for anybody who is a oh, good right. fit to work with us. So we've got this, we've got this site, pimpyourfunnel.com. And if you fill in your details on there, then we will send you through a free report and we'll figure out for you how much more money could you be making from your course sales? Is it, right. could you make 50 grand more a month? Or is it like, oh, you're too small at the moment. You're only going to make three grand more, whatever. We'll figure out mm -hmm. how much more money you can make. If you're big enough and you would be a good fit to work with us, we only work with like much with, with people who've got good, uh, big organic audiences. Then we'll also do a free funnel review. So that's like our lead magnet, right? We're giving that away for free. Um, right. We'll go through and review your sales page and your checkout page, and we'll say like these are the exact things you should be changing. We'll do like a Loom video explaining and, it. All. And it's a it's a human analysis. It's not yeah, absolutely yeah. standardized it's reports great. that you get all the time that don't sell you anything. No, so the 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 free report for just anybody is more standardized. A person does go through and actually tweak it, but the the mm -hmm. funnel review is a video that's like a half hour long from one of our expert account managers. So that's like right, okay. we're giving away a lot. So. That's what we found is like a good front end thing to get the details of the person so that you can then you can then follow up with them after that. But generally, yeah, generally the thing to do is get hold of someone's details first because there's very few people who are ready to make us to buy straight away. They need like yeah, to I, get to know a bit. Yeah, I think that's a huge mistake we all make is we kind of think people read a page and then they're convinced and they buy. And obviously there are multiple touch points, multiple decision points. And also we're learning more and more that the person who contacts us is not the person who researched initially or the person who found us. So today yeah. I was talking to a, a potential client who's probably going to sign, and they said, oh, my CMO told me to look at this tool. I looked at it. I didn't understand why. So I booked a call to understand, um, mm. which is really interesting because the person actually didn't know anything about it but was on board to hear and understand. Uh, so that's completely not on this particular topic. But the, the B2B put, uh, funnel is really, really messy. And trying to tidy it up is something we struggle with a great deal. And wouldn't I mean this is a great way to tidy it up. You get people on your email list and then you can communicate with them. Yeah. So do you have I see you've got like as your your main call to action is book a free call. Do you yeah, that's have rubbish, any, isn't it? <laughs> it's I mean, like, what, what how many people book it? Like is that is that something that does convert well, or is that something that you find no very, very small percentage of our traffic actually convert? Well, that's a great question. Now what happened was we put that on because we didn't have any valuable free downloads and okay. some people book calls but they've got no idea what they're booking a call for so it's a waste of time <laughs> and it isn't the best thing to lead with and we're currently changing it to push them through to the cali cube process has solved digital marketing download the pdf read 57 pages if it makes sense contact us and we can implement this for you and boost your business mm -hmm. and that hopefully will work a lot better yeah it'd be really interesting to see if you actually track how many people on your homepage or on your whole website traffic convert to the next stage? Yeah. How much does that go up? And then how many of the, because every time, so you want the number of steps in your funnel should be the fewest number to get the result you're after. Now, if you have just book a call, well, that's nice and simple, right? You go straight to book a call. You want calls yeah. booked, cool. But does it actually get you the qualified leads, enough of the qualified leads that you want to get? Like you just said, well, some of the people aren't qualified and there's a bunch of people probably who are qualified who then don't book because they're not sure about taking mm. that next step. But you don't want tons and tons of steps because you, at every stage you lose some people. So if you get into yours, uh, if you put a, an incredibly valuable lead magnet, you've got this ebook that you're talking about at the moment. I'll come back to that a little bit. Then you, the next step for you, it could be, in your, you know, early on in your email sequence, you offer a call, or maybe your confirmation page, you offer a call, and or right. maybe you have the confirmation page is um, like a, a survey for them to fill in to that automatically figures out if they qualify, and then if they do qualify, mm. then you offer them. A call. Um, so you want to be offering the call in there, but you also want to have other like steps that somebody could take, probably in between 
um, being on your email list and booking a call. Then it's probably something else like maybe watch a webinar from us or yeah. whatever that helps to educate and qualify them further. Yeah, I mean, I always tend to think uh, that I need to give them as many choices as possible so that I catch everybody. But mm -hmm. that isn't right, is it? Well, a confused customer never buys. So, yes, you want so no. different <laughs> options, but you don't want them all at the same time. Right? You want right. to make it really clear to everybody at any one time, this is the thing to do next. So when someone's on your email list, that's great because now you can email them all about option one and all, you yeah. know, maybe a few emails to tell them about, here's why you might want to book a call with us. Here's how a call works. Here's what we'll cover. Here's some of the benefits people got from it, blah, blah, blah. Here's case studies, testimonials. And then the next month or the next week or whatever, you might mm -hmm. say, right, now we're going to do a webinar where we're going to be explaining whatever, the importance of brand SERPs or whatever, you know, whatever topic you're going to be covering. And then you promote the hell out of the, the webinar in advance. And then on the webinar at the end, you're going to promote the call. So it's always one call to action, but, but you have, there's, there's multiple, there's multiple different things, but they just have one at a time. Like, so for example, yep. in, the, in the course sales space, right, we'll only ever promote one course at a time. Lots of people on Black Friday will say 30% off everything, 50% yeah. off everything. And they lose out a lot because then lots of people are confused. They don't know what to get. You can't promote any of them properly because you're trying to promote just it's on discount, which is a terrible series of emails. What do you say yeah. in email number two? Still on discount. You know, you want to have Ooh, useful. I got, I got one of those. And it was yeah. just discount, discount, discount. And all they did was change from percentage to monetary amount. Right. <laughs> the savings over a year. And it was just like, we'll try all these different numbers and see which one triggers them. And I'm not sure how yeah. it was because I just ended up thinking, I, I can't figure out Terribly how much it. Nobody wants to receive that, right? Nobody wants to send it. It's like it's an awful email campaign. You want emails that provide value and move people towards the sale at the same time. But that's, that's what you want to have in place, right? Because that way, people like being on your email list. They stick around. They keep opening them, even if they're not ready to buy yet. And you feel good about sending them because you're sending people useful information, not discount, 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 discount. You know, which is a is a rubbish yeah. thing. Like most people only do promotions on Black Friday because everybody else is doing them, so they feel like they're allowed to send these terrible email promotions, and then they do. But if you don't send terrible email promotions, what if you send brilliant email promotions? Then you could send them all the time. Which yeah. is one of the things that we do with our clients that you can send an email promotion every month because you write good email promotions that people like receiving and they make you sales. Brilliant. So yeah, don't have multiple calls to actions in any at any one time because people are not paying attention. People are yeah. distracted. They're busy. If you're lucky, you can get them to notice one thing and understand one thing. If you're lucky, if you're really good and you really work at it, if you put two or three things in there, you've you've lost nearly everybody. Okay, no, it's really good advice. And it is really, I need to, or we need to be decisive and say, we've planned this out. We know where you're going. And people will jump yes. off because because the next the step they're looking for is further down the line. But then with B2B in, in particular, we may well catch them in a different way and they may come back in to step two from a different source. So I think one of the things is don't, don't panic and be decisive. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is, you talked a lot about emails. Now, I can't imagine that's all there is to being contrarian. Well, but the contrarian thing, no, it's not. But the contrarian thing is how much of your effort you put into the funnel versus putting into the traffic or the product. So it's three things, right? So traffic, conversion, okay. economics. So it's like this is this is the kind of a, a way of looking at a fun, uh, um, uh, a way of looking at business, like a lens you could look through. You need to get some traffic from somewhere. You have to convert them to buying something, and then you have to make a certain amount of money from them. Then you take the money that you made from them and you put that back into driving more traffic and getting more people through, right? That's a lens that you can look at kind of business through. Now, if all of your time is spent on the traffic and the economics, like on the on making good products and on the on driving traffic to it, and your conversion is terrible, then you should be spending more time on the conversion stage. And this is what I see is most people are terrible at this. Just like not, oh, they're okay. It's like they're awful. They're just so, which means that you're throwing away most of the opportunity that you've got. Now, I'm biased because I'm seeing, I'm, I'm, look, I'm searching out the businesses that have got bad funnels, right? So mm. I know that I could be biased on this. Maybe there's loads of people who've got great funnels and just not enough traffic. But I don't think so. I've not seen them either. They've just got bad traffic and bad funnels, <laughs> you know? So it's like, okay, maybe you need to work on both. But almost nobody really spends the time that they should on actually 
doing it. And, and this is just basic stuff, right? I'm not talking about anything revolutionary. Mm -hmm. but people aren't doing it. They're not sending email promotions when they should be sending one every month. They're not improving their sales pages when they should be doing it. They're not creating order bumps and upsells to increase average order value when they should be doing it. And they're just ignoring it because that's it's it's somehow not the way that the online business is done. No, it's a really good point. And I'm, I'm thinking as you talk uh, about CaliCube, which is obviously my primary reference mm. to all of this. We've got an amazing top of funnel. We're pulling exactly the right people in. We've sorted that. It's taken us two years. And now the people coming down the funnel are the right people. And we're educating as they come down the funnel to what we're doing, which is quite, um, what's the word, groundbreaking, let's say. And we've built a product that I built eight years ago that's already doing what it needs to do. Elise has taken that over and she's about to build an even better product. And as you say, right in the middle there, I only had the conversation about this, the proper conversation with Katrina two days ago. Mm. So I've had the conversation, but it wasn't like this. It wasn't as constructive as this. And it seems like every other business, I've done the funnel and I've done the post funnel, but I haven't done the bottom of funnel. Mm. So you're making so a great point. Sorry. What's your process at the moment? Somebody, somebody gets to your site, they see the book a call page, they can book a call. But they don't. What, what else happens? <laughs> yeah, well, they don't book a call, so now we're changing that. What, now we've got to the point where we're saying we've got these valuable PDF downloads. We've got one for yeah. the agencies who might use CaliCube Pro. We've got one for business leaders who want a digital marketing strategy. We've got one to reassure digital marketers, content writers that generative AI in search or search generative experience isn't as scary as they think it is. And we have the solution and we can hold their hand and make them feel better about it because Google is a child and all they need to do is educate it and guide it. And they can then also get education from Google about themselves to better identify what their digital marketing strategy should be, which is a lovely two-way relationship with a child that is a huge, huge intelligent robot. Um, <laughs> And so we've got these downloads and we just need to put that link in place so that people go and download it and they can choose which one they want to take, understand which one applies to them, read that, and then come to a webinar, as you say, or book a call. So it makes total sense something, and we just haven't done it. Sorry. What, what happens up, but when somebody books a call, so they go to the, they click that button, they go to book a call. Let's yeah. say they're a qualified lead, right? They'd be a good fit to work with you. What happens next? Is there anything that happens before the call? Is there anything that happens after the call? Is there anything that happens if Ooh. they decide after the call they're not going to buy? Like, what, is, what, what have you got around that? No, I've just realized we're doing something really, really stupid. We've got this book a call button on the homepage, right top and center. They click on it. And the first thing on the book a call is be very careful. You, oh, sorry, not be very careful. Be aware that we only start with clients at $3,000. So we're immediately pushing away people because we don't want to have calls with people who aren't, haven't got a budget of $3,000 or more. There's lots of resources on the site. Go and have a look at that if you really want to learn, but you don't have the budget. So we've, we've just put this friction and a wall in front of them. But for us, it's just not to have people on calls that don't make sense. Then they mm -hmm. book a call, and there's nothing happens between the moment they book it and the call itself, which is foolish in the extreme. And then after the call, Leanne follows up, um, depending on what they've said to me. Okay. So what you would ideally have in place, and this isn't like, this is not a small piece of work, but it's like the, the steps that, depending on what your conversion rate is from booking a call to attending a call to saying hmm. they're interested to actually buying, depending on what the conversion rates are at each of those stages, you would want to work on make figuring out which, which one to make better. So currently oh, we, okay. for example, have like, about a 90% show up rate for the calls. So we're not gonna make that way better. There's not that much improvement to make there. But somebody yeah. might have a 60% show up rate, in which case you're like, okay, you really wanna work on getting more people to show up to the calls. Um, if you've got a good show up rate to the calls, but the conversion rate on the call to somebody saying they're interested is not so great, then like, okay, that's the step in the funnel to work on. If people say they're interested, but then they don't convert, then that's particularly the step to work on first. But what you- that's what the one. We Okay, people say they're interested, but then don't go ahead. Okay. Yeah, they say this is really interesting. And then they say, oh, we don't have the budget or the boss isn't convinced because there isn't ROI, mm. we haven't proved our ROI. That's the biggest barrier. But a good, so we've got a really have, good, sorry. Yeah. What's, what is the offer that they generally get at the end of that call? Uh, it's an offer of either a knowledge panel to boost their EAT credibility signals and Google, which is something that is an easy thing for people to understand. Uh, mm -hmm. or it's a full digital marketing strategy using the CaliQ process that they can implement within their team. And after two years, they're independent and they can implement this entire branded 
marketing strategy package for Google, which is the approach we take. So it's brand marketing packaging for SEL. And ballpark kind of cost, are we talking like five figures, six figures? What kind of thing are they signing up to at that point? They're signing a five-figure contract for the company, yeah. So what we found worked really well there was splinter. Every time that you have a step in the funnel, I'll, I'll, give, the, I'll mm. give the concept and I'll explain this, the practical stuff. Every time that you have a step in the funnel that isn't converting well enough, split it in, figure out how to split it into two steps and figure what oh, can right. we do to make that convert better? How do you make each little bit of it convert better? So it's already two steps or five steps or whatever in people's brains, but you, but it's just how can you look at it? How can you break it? The idea. Mm. So what we do is we we used to offer people, first thing is come work with us, pay us like $5,000 a month. It used to be, it's now more expensive than that, but like it used to be $5,000 a month. And that was the first decision they had to make. And that's quite a big decision to make because they're like, oh, well, I need to do this for at least three months. It's at least 15 grand. And then what if it doesn't work? And blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing that we would ever do with a client when we started working with them was an, an audit of what they've got in place at the moment so we could figure out exactly what they needed doing first. So we splintered out the audit and we said, well, well let's just sell that first. And then mm -hmm. if people like that, then they go into the main thing. So we're doing that anyway, right? We're already doing it and we're already taking half a month to do it, two weeks to do it. So therefore, let's just break it out and charge a couple of thousand dollars for it as the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then it's easier for someone to say yes to $2,000 than it is for them to say yes to $5,000 a month for an unlimited number of months. And that increased conversions massively when we started mm. doing that. Get something really, really, really good first straight away, and they get to test out working with us. And then if they like it, they can move on to the next step. And if they don't like it, well, they've got this thing. They've got the audit, the roadmap, KPI spreadsheet, mm. customer. So they know exactly what they're going to get from working with us. And I learned that from, there's a guy called Brennan Dunn. And he sells a course about road mapping. And that's where he kind of detailed that. And I was like, that's genius. And I started mm -hmm. out, I sold it at a loss for 500 bucks. And then I raised it to, that always converted. So I raised it to 1,000, then 2,000. And now it's it's 5,000. The second thing that you can do is you can give people a reason to take action right now. So we mm -hmm. sell that for $5,000. But if you have a call with us and then you buy within a week of working with us, then it's reduced by $2,000. So you now get it for $2,900. So there's an urgency to take action within a week. And then to make it more compelling, we have a series of emails that go out over the next week, all detailing, like here's more information about the audit that we talked about on the call. And there's a half hour interview with me and my head of delivery about what's included in it. And then there's a case study uh, um, where I, I talk to one of our clients who got the audit about what they liked about it, what was helpful about it, how it helped mm. them. And there's another case study about somebody who then worked with us afterwards and how much money they made. And then there's something else. So for that whole week, there's a series of follow-up emails to give different people who've got different ways of deciding whether to buy or not a way of understanding it better. Some people work better mm. by hearing about others. Some people want all the information and the logic. Some people want more reassurance, blah, blah, blah. So you give them the week and you give them a reason to take action. So that's we've basically now taken what was do you want to sign up? And they go, yes or no. And we've broken it into, right, it's a week process and it's only about the audit and it's we've got a series of steps to follow up. So all of these are the kinds of things you can do in your in your funnel to convert one of those stages better. And nobody does it, right? No. I'm the weirdo because I do this, right? But it's brilliant. It works really well. Yeah, well, I think you're a, you're a great weirdo because this is always wonderful, <laughs> wonderful information. And I mean, I would like to say, because Maria, who does the podcast, who got you on this, and she chooses the guests, and now I know why she chose you, because <laughs> we need this information. And, and now I know Joanne needs to watch this, Elisa needs to watch this, Katrina needs to watch this, and Leanne needs to watch this. And this is going to be hugely helpful because those four together will be able to absolutely nail what you've just said. So that's been hugely helpful for me. Thank you so much. Um, I've been delighted and I'm sure it was helpful for the audience too. But before we finish up, you have this question to answer. How do brand SERPs help with business revenues? Less than a minute, John. All right. Well, I'm very aware that if anybody hears me on a podcast and they go search for my name, they find some actor um, and then they might well drop out and not get any further. So I guess the way that it would definitely help us is if I was actually showing up on that page and someone when they searched for me would find my name click through and then have a chance of actually uh, getting in touch and working with us. So I think that uh, that's how it can help our business revenues. That's a brilliant answer because people or companies often don't think about the fact that people will search for the name of the person they saw from the company. And if that person doesn't appear, that's a lost opportunity. Uh, and if they do appear and they look really, really 
credible, authoritative, then it's a huge push towards the conversion. That was a great answer. I liked it because it was lovely and short and slightly different angle to the one I expected. And I'll just put this up now so that anybody who wants to figure out course funnels with Joseph, Joseph AI can do so. And thank you for that delightful interview, John. Absolutely brilliant. And we're now going to pass the baton to Frederic Valias, how generative AI is changing PPC. He's absolutely delightful. He's super smart. Um, I've been on his show and he was brilliant. Um, and it was really good fun. So I know it's going to be brilliant with him. Could you possibly pass the baton, John? Yeah, so Fred is, is a formal, former Google exec, and he's one of the tech giant's first 500 employees. He spent about 10 years managing and evangelizing for Google Ads. He's an accomplished author and speaker on pay-per-click account management, automation, scripts, spoken at loads of different events. I think he's going to be a fantastic guest, and I think your audience is going to get loads from hearing from him. Super duper. That was brilliant. You really prepared that. That was delightful. <laughs> A quick goodbye to end the show. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. CaliCube. It's all about your brand, SERP.